And now we have Emily in the studio with a review of Sandra Bullock and Channing Tatum's new romantic comedy, The Lost City. Take it away, Emily. Hey, sneak peekers, I'm Emily, and last week during South by Southwest, I was able to attend the world premiere of the new adventure romance comedy movie, The Lost City. The movie follows Loretta Sage, a reclusive romance novelist played by Sandra Bullock, who gets kidnapped while on a book tour with her cover model, Alan, played by Channing Tatum. Loretta is tired of writing and has set this book about archaeologists discovering the lost city of Dee and the treasure inside as the last installment in the series. Her kidnapper is the eccentric billionaire and international criminal Fairfax, played by Daniel Radcliffe, who wants Loretta to help him find the real-life lost city of Dee after elements of her book contain striking parallels with reality. And even though Alan doesn't have many, if any, survival skills, he promises to track down and rescue Loretta with the help of an ex-military man, played by none other than Brad Pitt. What follows is a fun, but ultimately by-the-numbers jungle adventure. The Lost City is a movie that relies on star power, but with such an impressive cast, how could it not? Although she has been, hasn't been in a rom-com in a while, Sandra Bullock shines in this movie and is here to remind us that she is one of the best rom-com actresses of all time. She also has great chemistry with co-star Channing Tatum, who takes his himbo act from films like 21 Jump Street and Magic Mike and replicates it here to hilarious results. Tatum is the consistent source of a majority of the laughs in the film, but his performance also treats Alan with a lot of empathy, never making him a caricature. Opposite them is Daniel Radcliffe, who doesn't normally play the villain. The script's co comedic nature doesn't give him ample chances to be genuinely villainous or scary, but Radcliffe has such a great on-screen presence and looks like he's having a lot of fun, so it's hard not to love him. I just wish he had a bit more screen time. The Lost City also features a number of other scene-stealing stars, including Divine Joy Randolph, Patty Harrison, and Oscar Nunes, who you might recognize from both The Office and The Proposal. Even with its reliance on star power, the script is still funny, although it is fairly formulaic and some of the jokes are also a bit juvenile at times. But that isn't really something that bothered me personally, especially because the stars really sell the jokes. There are also a lot of references to films like Romancing the Stone and Indiana Jones throughout the movie, and I can't help but wonder if the movie would be as funny or stand on its own without these references. Still, despite its formulaic story, The Lost City is an original blockbuster, meaning that it doesn't exist within a cinematic universe or add to an existing franchise, which is something that's getting harder to find these days. At that level, I'm grateful for the film. The Lost City is not an amazing movie by any means, and it certainly won't be winning any Oscars. However, if you're someone who's just looking for a good laugh and hoping to be entertained for two hours, then this is the movie for you. I recommend grabbing a few friends and heading over to your nearest theater on Friday, March 25th, when The Lost City releases nationwide. And if you go, be sure to tweet us your initial reactions at SneakPeakTV.